ed tech. Education is the future. The heroes of tomorrow, the rainmakers, you can say for the lack of a better word, are going to be there. Hey guys, welcome to the Up Next podcast where we are interviewing teen entrepreneurs that are making it big time in the startup world. We are asking the questions we know you want to hear. Up Next is an app made for teens where anyone can join or build a real life startup. Our guest today. Our guest today is Nikola Ivanova, 15 year old entrepreneur from Bulgaria, uh, holds the title of the unofficial digital investor of Bulgaria. Uh, uh, Nicola is focused on turning Bulgaria into a digital powerhouse and awakening the world to the amazing opportunities in his country and it's presented through your podcast. So uh, Nicola, when did everything start? It was two years ago, man, when I was 13, I just went all in, you know, I could make a lot of money, each other of people's lives. It was the perfect career for me. Sounds amazing. Okay, so let's jump right into it. How did you find yourself um, doing this? Like what, what led to you getting this title, doing this journey? Well, I would guess I would think the internet. It was the big game changer. I learned all of this through the internet. I got my first mentors there. It was all about the internet. The big change, the big, the you know, the biggest reason is definitely the internet. Okay, great. For sure. I'm actually to piggyback on what, about what you said. I'm the same thing. All, all, all online and everything just uh, opens open. doors for you, I guess. Exactly. So talking, talking about the internet, you said uh, you found your first mentors on the internet. So who do you consider being your first mentor? I, I would consider a guy who I don't really, I'm not in touch right now. His name is Ben Gothard. He's a pretty cool Jewish entrepreneur from USA. He taught me everything that I need to get started. He's a nice. good guy. Nice. We already like him. <laughs> uh, so how much time did it take you to build what you already have? I'm guessing, you know, we're talking about the podcasts and yeah. the viewers and stuff. It took me, and it still is taking me time, right? But I would say it took me a whole year before I get the hang of how to interview people, how to post content, etc. It was a long process, but I enjoyed every second of it. As an interviewer, how would you say that we are doing? Yeah. Are we intriguing? <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, I believe that the mission is more important, right? You can always learn to ask better questions. But if you have the mission in mind, like, dude, you're set, right? It's all yeah. about the mission that you have. If you have a big enough mission, you can become a great interviewer. You know, it's just a natural process. Right? I, Mindset. I love those answers. I'm just really, I, I like to say, I like we to say are that. here for it. Exactly. Uh, so, Starting talking about your podcast, about your first, you can call it your first product, your, your podcast. Um, did you actually, if you had to invest money into the podcast, how did you uh, create the first money to invest in all the gear and everything else? Yeah. Well, I found a couple of mentors through my podcast. Then they offered me a couple of internships, which paid me like 50 to to $100 per month. It was more than enough to get started, to make a logo. Ooh. And uh, basically, yeah. <laughs> and uh, like make a logo, host, host the podcast, you know, that was free, uh, mm -hmm. get the equipment, which is pretty important. And uh, but it was all about my mentors, dude. Like they paid me everything. It was kind of wow. like angel support. Wow, great supporters. So would you say that the viewers that, you know, are watching your podcast, because I saw that you have like from all over the world, like from the US to Mozambique, that's really like, that's like yeah. a huge difference. How how would you say that you got these viewers? Would it be ear to mouth, social media? I would say word of mouth and organic reach through my podcast. And also like, of course, the word of mouth being my guests, because I would say to them, hey, right. can you share that with one person? And it, it's like a flywheel. It mm -hmm. all comes back together. That's great. It sounds like it's going really far. I mean, you talked about your podcast and I'm sure it's growing. Uh, what is the next goal uh, with your podcast? Turn it into the biggest Audi university in the world is a huge goal of mine. I love that. We are going far. I like that you don't have a limit. Um, could you tell me if there was, you know, being this person doing such impressive things at such a young age, was there a moment in this journey or, you know, the journey is never ending, but was there a moment where you felt like you, you made a huge mistake and like, You've experienced failure. How did you how did you go through that? How did you fix it? Yeah, well, it was the last year because I, uh, you know, I saw that I was burning out and I thought that I hated podcasting. I thought it was not my passion. It was not true. I just I just didn't have a huge mission for it. 
So I burned out and I stopped podcasting for a couple of months. That was not good for me at all, like for my mental health and the pandemic, dude, that was, that, that, that sucked, right? Uh, but then I, get, I got clear on my vision on what I truly wanted to do and where I wanted to take it. And then I just started all over again. It's all about, you know, being clear where you want to go and then you don't need motivation. It, you know, it's, it's just in yourself. Yeah. Totally. So, uh, a question about your podcast: Do you uh, host it by yourself, or do you have a co co-host? I host it by myself, but I definitely want to have a co-host. It's far more fun. It's far more exactly. fun. So, on that topic, uh, what are the three traits you look into a co-host or co-founder uh, in uh, in your startup? Definitely curiosity, because you got to be curious to ask good questions. Yeah, I like that. Drive, yeah, drive as well, because you got to be hardworking, have really high standards for all my friends. Mm -hmm. And three, I, I would guess, you know, um, being for being a forward thinker, thinking about the future, because it's all we got. I'm really futuristic, so I've, some people might not like it, but uh, I always think about the future. Very Elon Musk of you. Elon Musk of you. Looking yeah. into, are you already on Mars in your head? No, nah, um, not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, so you are pr probably, you know, interviewing a bunch of um, interesting people and getting to a bunch of interesting places. Being so young, doing what you do, do you find a lot of advantages and disadvantages to your age? I would say the advantages, the, the advantages are a lot. But you can interview almost anybody because they like what you're doing at such a young age. Yeah. But some people, and there will always be these people, who are, you know, they think about, hey, you're probably a scammer, you're probably a bot, uh, what, what do your parents think, you know, those people, that's the bad, that's like the dark side of young entrepreneurs, like you will always be kind of taken, uh, you will always be underestimated at the beginning from really high-end individuals, not from everybody, but from the, those who are very strict with themselves, they're going to underestimate you, and that's not their fault, right? Uh, but it's the norm we have as a society that if you're young enough to do something, you know, we're not going to like it. You know? it yeah. It's just, it's the norm. You're going to be underestimated. I mean, um, that, I, I love your answers because they're actually very to the point. Uh, you're not um, uh, talking around the question. You're actually uh, answered straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, something I wanted to ask you is because you're having a podcast, uh, I'm sure there's like a tech tool that you use that's like a truly life saver, you know, like a host or, or a gear even. Uh, so what is one tech tool that you can live without? Definitely Calendly. It's so easy to schedule um, interviews with Calendly. You know, yeah. I would suggest to everybody to use it. It's awesome. Nice. Um, okay, next question. So I'm sure that you've heard this before, but not from us. So which entrepreneurs inspire you the most these days? Who do you have your eye on? I would say Jeff Bezos. You know, a lot of people don't like him, but I like him because he's a guy who doesn't care if he doesn't understand an industry. He's going to go there and he's going to be the leader in it. Now he stepped down, but I truly believe that, you know, his tenacity to go into no, He's there. not there. Yeah. yeah. His tenacity to just go out there in, in the unknown field to just conquer it. That's what I want to be as an entrepreneur. So, uh, I mean, Jeff Bezos, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, he's one of the greatest entrepreneurs to do it. Yep. Um, which trade do you feel is your weakest and you need to outsource it, whether it be editing or something like that? Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at scheduling my time because I sometimes forget what kind of things I need to do on top of the things I like to do, right? So I believe that, you know, if somebody who is a great at time management, can, you know, can either work for me or like give me some advice, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm really bad with my time, but I love That's it. Right, we have Calendly too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. Okay, next question. Also, you've probably heard it before, but I, I'm looking forward to hearing your answer. So what piece of advice do you have to give to all the teens looking to be in your place? Definitely focus on solving problems that are really big. You know, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, solving everyday problems that not everybody finds. Uh, but even if you want to get rich, let's say that's the only motivation you have, solving huge problems in everyday society would be very, very important. And I'll give you an example. The future is all about ed tech. Education is the future. The heroes of tomorrow, the rainmakers, you can say for the lack of a better word, are going to be there because we need a lot of new education. And 
you know, so um, if yeah, starting with us, right? Up next, yeah, situation. yeah, right? absolutely, for sure. Um, so uh, a few bonus questions uh, we wanted to ask you is how important is for, is it for young entrepreneurs to think about social change when creating a business, a startup, a podcast? Doesn't matter what. Social change is what makes, you know, the wheel go, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can really, you can do anything in life that is worth doing without actually impacting the world in some way. You yeah. cannot become, again, I'm using it as an example again, you cannot become rich or famous or, I don't know, or remain in history or even like help your family if you don't make some sort of change. And social change, that is the only thing we got nowadays, right? Because almost every problem needs, it's like, it's a huge problem on social level on a global social level. So it's the most important thing. You don't care about anything, absolutely anything else. If you have a very, very clear vision of the social problem and social change you want to see, everything else will follow. You really do need to make your impact. I, I feel that. Yeah. Um, okay, last question. Um, feel free to answer, however. If you could have any superpower in the world, what would you pick? Definitely read people's minds because they can ask better questions. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's actually great. As an interviewer, I guess we would agree too. Yeah. Just uh, see how people are thinking about different questions. That's actually pretty smart. I like it. Yeah, for sure. It goes well with you know with what you do. Um, so it's been great, you know, getting to know you and seeing what you're doing.